All right, Chris, welcome to coverage of college football presented by Cars.com and ESPN and ESPN 3D. A critical Big Ten Legends Division showdown. Number 24, Northwestern, taking on Michigan from the Big House in Ann Arbor. Michigan tied with Nebraska at 4-1. Four Cornhuskers own the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Northwestern only a game back with three conference games to play. Michigan will be without Denard Robinson, still bothered by that nerve injury in his throwing elbow. He is dressed, but not expected to play. Did not throw on Thursday. Devin Gardner took all the snaps with the first group and will make his second consecutive start at quarterback. Played QB in high school, played quarterback and spot duty last year, but was a wide receiver for most of this season. When Robinson got hurt in the Nebraska game, they went with Russell Bellamy at quarterback. He struggled. And then the following week, they moved Gardner back to QB. And he played well last week in a win against the Gophers, accounting for three touchdowns. Steve Flaherty will kick it away. And Dennis Norfleet is the deep man for Michigan. Fleet will take a knee. It will come out to the 25. Now Devin Gardner is a dual threat, but Brian, he's more the type of quarterback that Al Borges and Brady Hoke want in their system for the future. Yeah, at Michigan, they want to run the football in a power two-back set, and Devin Gardner is the kind of quarterback that can sit in the pocket, play action, throw the ball down the field, and then when plays break down, he's got that elusiveness to extend plays and make plays with his feet, but he's more of a traditional style quarterback than Deron Robinson. And they go out of the two back on first down, and a short set and throw to Gallon that's caught for a gain of about seven. Let's check in with the third member of our crew for the latest on Denard. Here's Jeff. Thanks, Dave. Well, I spent some time before the game talking to the head athletic trainer for Michigan, Paul Schmidt. I asked him about Denard's injury. He said the trouble with an injury to the ulnar nerve is unlike a high ankle sprain or a tear in the MCL, ACL, there's no predictable timetable for an injury to that elbow, the return. He just doesn't know. So with Denard, they said, look, he's day to day, like you said, rest on Thursday. He's got a sleeve he can wear for protection if they need it. All right, Jen, Toussaint able to break a tackle and pick up the first down. So with Denard out, that means a guy like Toussaint really has to get going. Had a great year last year, led all Big Ten rushers in conference games a year ago, but he's averaging only three and a half yards per carry this year and a total of 391 yards. Well, not having Denard Robinson in the game is going to change fundamentally what Michigan does offensively, and Toussaint is more of a downhill back. He's not the kind of back that's traditional in the spread look, so get some good looks in this game. First down on the 38. Again, out of two back. Oh, a dangerous play there. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Quentin Williams. Gardner was trying to set up the screen to the back. Toussaint almost intercepted. Here's Denard in warm-ups. Tell us what you see yeah, here, Brian. The thing with this, with this injury is you can't grip the ball. And if you can't grip the ball, then you can't direct it where you want it to go. You see Devin Gardner uh, throwing the football and Jack Kennedy. But Denard didn't take any reps in, in the, the quarterback warm-ups. And when you can't grip the ball, there's really nothing you can do, nothing Denard Robinson can do to get back any quicker. Out of the eye in second and ten, a quick pitch to Tucson. A nice play by Quentin Williams, taking him down for a loss. Back-to-back -back plays from Quentin Williams, and this defense for Northwestern, you know one thing, when you play against a Pat Fitzgerald coach team, they are going to play physical, they're going to be disciplined, and this defense has kept them in many games this year. They've only lost twice, right? Yeah. The only breakdowns they've had have been in the fourth quarter against uh, Nebraska and Penn State. This defense has to play 60 minutes today. Officially no game, did lose about a half yard. Third down and 10. Michigan number one in the Big Ten on third down conversions. Gardner gets hit but delivers the pass. Unable to hang on to it though was Gerald Robinson. It's incomplete. And Michigan will punt the football. Daniel Jones had pressure on the quarterback Gardner as he released it. So Pat Fitzgerald decides to come after a young quarterback. Take a look. There's no safety back. They're going to bring everybody. Gardner throws the ball to the right spot. Takes a big hit. And Robinson has just got to make this play. The ball is there to be made. you got to make that play for a young quarterback. Be physical and get to that football. 
And now Venrick Mark, one of the more dangerous return men, will get a shot on a line drive kick. He's got two punt returns for touchdowns. And Mark takes it out to the 23-yard line. Welcome inside the booth, along with Brian Greasy, Jen Brown down on the field. I'm Dave Pash. Uh, Brian Devin Gardner, a guy that played quarterback in high school, played some last year, his second straight start. What would you think of that opening series? Well, that last throw against an all-out blitz, taking uh, a shot in the pocket and delivering the ball on target is a really good sign. And a young quarterback, you worry about their nerves early in the game. First game he's ever started at Michigan Stadium, and I think off the bat is a good sign. Northwestern's got a pretty dangerous quarterback in Kane Coulter. He's rushed for over 600 yards. He'll pitch it here to Mark. And Mark did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Thomas Gordon knocks him down for no gain. Well, they've taken Kane Coulter from his wide receiver position and moved him back to quarterback. Remember, there was a stretch in the middle of the season where Trevor Simeon was playing a lot at the quarterback position. But I like what Pat Fitzgerald and Mick McCall, offensive coordinator, have done getting the ball in their best player's hands. Coulter taking off, and he's going to lose yardage. Dumped at the 19 by J.T. Floyd, a loss of a couple on the play. Michigan, an excellent defense under coordinator Greg Madison. This is a good defense, but when you have a miscommunication in the backfield between Mark and Coulter, you're, you're doomed from the beginning, and that's not the way that Northwestern wants to start this game. So third down and 12. Northwestern is number two in the Big Ten behind Michigan in third down conversions. But they have to get to the 32-yard line. Coulter completing 70% of his passes. And a leaping catch made at the 39-yard line by Christian Jones for a first down. A long developing play and a great concentration by Christian Jones. Controls that ball all the way to the ground. Remember, you got to control it to the ground and had one foot in. 19 yards. And now Venrick Mark grabbed in the backfield and brought down by Frank Clark. Another negative play. Loss of one. This Michigan defense, seventh in the country in total defense, 13th in points allowed, and number one in pass defense in the nation. And the biggest difference has really been their attitude and their effort. When you watch this team play, there'll be six, seven, eight hats around the football every time on every play, and that's made a big difference in their performance. They go out of empty here. Coulter in trouble. Takes off and has a running lane. To the 45, first down and more. All the way to the Michigan 44-yard line. An 18-yard run by Kane Coulter, and Desmond Morgan eventually got it. This is why you put Kane Coulter back at quarterback. Let him throw the ball, and if it breaks down, he becomes your best element to make a play. Runs right around Jake Ryan. That was no match. But Kane Coulter is a, an athlete that can throw the football. Another run here on first down. The pitch to Trumpy, and Trumpy does well, showing his vision. He found the running lane and takes it inside the 30. All the way to the 23 before J.T. Floyd knocks him out of bounds. It's a 21-yard scamper. The option element to this offense is what makes it different than so many other offenses we see in the spread. The ability for Coulter to get to the edge and then pitch and read that consistently is really what scares defensive coordinators like Greg Madison. First down from the 23, seventh play of the drive. First man through. And they grab him after a gain of one. Trumpy unable to move the pile. Check that. It was Tim Riley on the carry. Michigan hasn't allowed an opening, uh, hasn't allowed opponent to score on the opening drive. They haven't given up a first quarter touchdown since week one. And they haven't even given up points in the first quarter since week two. There's Jordan Kovacs. On the leader of that secondary, hoping to make a play here. Second and eight for Northwestern. They go out of the empty with King Coulter. They'll shift Mark into the backfield with a play clock at five. And here's Mark. Big hole right down the middle of the defense to the nine-yard line. A 12-yard run. Cam Gordon on the stop. The Northwestern with a 
Terrific opening drop. Take a look. Only five guys in the box for Michigan. That's advantage Northwestern. They've got five blockers up front. Beautifully executed. And Michigan, if they're going to stop this inside running game, I don't think they're going to be able to do it with five guys in the box. They've got to get an extra guy down. Tyrus Jones in the backfield now with Mark. So they've got two tailbacks in there. First down and goal just inside the 10 yard line. Here's Mark. Spinning out of a tackle and then stacked up at the four. Venrick Mark, really an unknown nationally. But you look at his stats, he's number two in the Big Ten in rushing. He's number one in all purpose yards. He's only 175 pounds. But you saw him stick it in there. He's not afraid yeah. to take hits and run between the tackles. No, and he is really starting to assert himself over 100 yards on the ground the last three games. He's finding his stride, and they're beginning to feed him the football because they know that between he and Coulter, that's their main offense. He was a wide receiver last year. Here's Mark to the goal line. Touchdown! Benrick Mark with his 10th rushing touchdown. Let's see if uh, he got the ball across before the knee hits the ground. From that angle, hard to tell. Would be his 13th overall touchdown including the two punt returns great start for Northwestern yeah, what a great drive I mean to come out the way that they did the pace of play for Northwestern is is going to be an issue for Michigan they have got to be ready for this pace of play and throwing the ball with Coulter on the ground uh, running and then Mark finishing it off very impressive drive from Northwestern Bud Zeen on for the point after and over the last four games Northwestern has scored 10 touchdowns in their last 11 red zone possessions. Mm. Ben Rick Mark with his 10th rushing touchdown and Northwestern on top early in Ann Arbor. 10 play scoring drive by Northwestern nine run plays the one pass was a 19 yard pass by Coulter to Christian Jones on third and 12 yeah. It kept the drive alive and then after that. They just ran it right at Michigan and a three yard touchdown run by Mark to cap it. Yeah, and a great throw on third down over the linebackers and an, an even better catch from Christian Jones. But that's how this offense from Northwestern wants to operate mostly on the ground and then convert through the air on third down. Northfleet will run this one out for Michigan. And he gets hit at the 20 and driven down at the 22. Then it's Northfleet return the kickoff. They go with a one back set here and a quick toss to the flat to Gallon, who's pushed out at the 28 yard line. A gain of six. Daniel Jones on the stop. Well, if, if you're Michigan offensively, you came out, you made a couple of, of plays early on. You didn't convert on that uh, all the third down, all out blitz. Uh, but now your defense was on the field for 10 plays. You need to put something together here because really quickly you need to get your defense some time to rest and adjust on the sideline. Gardner hands it off on the jet sweep and going nowhere is Justice Hayes. Loss of seven on the play. Our impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Obviously, Gardner. How about Taylor Lewan, one of the best left tackles in college football? Yeah, and this offensive line has not blocked as well as they would like in the running game. I think a little bit more of a downhill power game plays right into Taylor Lewan's hands. And then defensively, we've seen Jake Ryan struggle already in space to bring King Coulter to the ground. The third down and long for Devin Gardner. Two of four passing so far. Well, he's got the arm strength to make that throw. Close to the first down. Gallon on the catch. We'll see where they spot it. And they're going to give him a first down. 11 yard game. This is part of the reason why Al Borges is so excited about Devin Gardner. Take a look from the pocket. He's got a rocket arm. There's no question that he can throw the football. And Jeremy Gallon coming off an ankle injury a week ago. No problem getting in and out of that cup. How different does the Michigan offense look so far than what you normally see with Denard at quarterback? We haven't seen any spread. We haven't seen any fly sweeps. We haven't seen any design quarterback runs. And Devin Gardner's under center again. This is completely different. Seven play to drive. Two stopped on the stretch. Nowhere to go. Leveled at the 39 yard line, a five yard loss. And Michigan faced with a second and 15. Gardner off play action. Again, a long throw, but he's got the arm strength. 
And Roundtree is free. Roundtree wearing Desmond Howard's old number takes it to the 29-yard line before Jared Carpenter gets to him. A 32-yard pass play. Another playoff of play action. This is just a naked one-man route. You see this arm strength, and while that was a little bit outside, Roundtree snatches it out of the air. Roundtree's got the speed to challenge downfield. Remember, this Northwestern defense is playing without one of their starting corners, and Nick Van Hoos, that was Demetrius Dugar, his backup, beaten on the play. Again, out of two back, and here's Rawls fighting for yardage. Takes it to the eight-yard line. Rawls on the stop, so it'll be second down and goal. I've been impressed with Northwestern's front seven so far against the run. Michigan has had nowhere, no lanes, inside or outside, run the ball on the ground. This drive has really been all Devin Gardner through the air. And Northwestern also has, at least statistically, the best pass rusher in the Big Ten. Tyler Scott leads the conference in sacks. Ten play to drive for Michigan, second down and goal. Play fake, and here's Gardner on the rollout. He'll run, dives. Hit the pylon. Did he step out first? No. Touchdown. He stayed in. And then hit the pylon with the ball. It's a touchdown for Michigan. And the first to <laughs> greet him and congratulate him is Denard Robinson. This is the element from Devin Gardner that the coaches love. Watch Ibrahim Campbell, number 24. He had leverage, but just the length from Devin Gardner hits the pylon, and that's a touchdown. Second rushing touchdown for Devin Gardner. An impressive drive running and throwing for the junior quarterback from Detroit. A pair of 10 play drives, one by Northwestern and Michigan with the answer. And just because Denard Robinson is out of this football game doesn't mean that Michigan's not going to be able to move the football. And he's going to captain on this team. He's going to congratulate his partner. Big answer, the Northwestern's touchdown. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy. Brian, of course, a Rose Bowl National Championship quarterback. I don't know if you had the ups, though, to hit the, uh, you the know, Go Blue sign as you came out. Well, when you're a freshman, you work out so hard that sometimes it's hard to get up to that man. It hurts. And the man who's playing the position you did here at Michigan, pretty impressive on that drive. Eight-yard touchdown run, identical to Northwestern. Ten plays, 78 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, but kind of the reverse of being through the air. All really Devin Gardner's arms until that last run for the touchdown. Here's Mark. Pass the 20. And up to the 26-yard line. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Jen Brown. It, Ann Arbor, the big house where Michigan is trying to get the 5-1 and one and keep pace with Nebraska atop the Legends division. The Cornhuskers play Penn State. 3.30 and ABC or ESPN2. Here's Mark grabbed at the point of attack and thrown aside by true freshman James Ross III. Coulter to the 30-yard line for three. Tripped up by Frank Clark. So third down coming up as we're inside two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Well, third down has been a real money down for Kane Coulter, this Northwestern offense. You remember Dan Purser, they were very good on third down. Again, this year, they're second in the Big Ten, converting 46% on third downs. Coulter to the air on third and six. Look out. Coulter got away from pressure. Still being chased. And now throws downfield, and it's incomplete. But there's a flag, a late hit out of bounds as Coulter was hit after he crossed the sideline, and this will be a first down for the Wildcats. Well, a mistake by Michigan defensively, and that drives Brady Hope crazy. They had containment on Kane Coulter, good coverage downfield. Everything is going to be set up for a fourth down punt, and then you have a mistake on the outside. There is no foul on the play. Fourth down. Well, so Craig Rowe, who was chasing the quarterback, a couple other guys from Michigan were as well, and the officials talked about it. They got it right. They said that it was legal. It was not late. Take a look at Jordan Kovacs, number 11 here, keeping containment, allowing Jabril Black to come after him, and that, uh, I think that's a good call. He was throwing that ball. He was in the line of play. Just glad they got it right. Officials discussed it and made the right call. It checks up at the 34. Michigan will have decent field position. 
Gardner steps up and looks for a running lane. Gardner takes a shot but picks up the first down. Nine yard run for Gardner and a first down for the Wolverines. These are the kinds of plays that make the offensive coordinator look real smart. You know, and everybody's covered. And then you got a quarterback with this kind of talent and this kind of size. Devin Gardner, remember, he's not a small quarterback. He's 6'4, 205 pounds, and he used all of that weight to get a first down. Gardner, four of seven passing, 57 yards. He also rushed for 25 yards and a score. And Michigan tied with Northwestern at seven apiece after one quarter of play in Ann Arbor. Well, twice Devin Gardner has run for a first down on third down, took a shot last time, and Brady Hoke probably saying, hey, pal, take it easy <laughs> Be there. Be smart. Be smart. We don't have a whole lot of help behind you. No, you got Denard Robinson not available because of the elbow. Russell Bellamy, we're told, is day to day, but the backup is Jack Kennedy, who is a walk on wearing a number that someone in our booth thinks thinks should be retired although <laughs> why do you say things like that i said one person in the booth i didn't say you <laughs> it could have been me i was talking about <laughs> you want my number to be retired no <laughs> i didn't think so here's tucson on first down he gets driven to the ground or minimal gain on the play mckevely got off a block and brought down Fitzgerald Tucson and, and, and if Brady Hope doesn't want his quarterback to be running the football too much they've got to be able to run with Tucson more consistently on first and second down that's who Brady Hope wants to be physical tough in the middle run the football and right now this offensive line for Michigan is not creating the kind of holes no. to get consistent run on the ground only nine yards for Tucson on seven carries play action again for Gardner and an accurate throw to Gallon for the first down they do have a pretty good kicker in Brendan Gibbons as long as 52. Gardner steps up and runs. Makes a beautiful move and picks up the first down. All the way to the 11-yard line. <laughs> Devin Gardner, we talk about the athletic ability of Denard Robinson, but watch Gardner on this play. You can see him think about Brady Hoke in his head. Don't run too much today. Well, there's a huge lane and I can do it. Great effort. And you can see the athletic ability and why this coaching staff for Michigan is really excited about the prospect of the next year with Devin Gardner. Got 17 yards there. Third time that he's run for a first down on third down. And that was third and 11. First down on the 11. Here's Tucson. Tackled at the six yard line. Araguzo on the stop. They keep feeding Tucson, fumble the ball uh, down here on a long run on the last Michigan drive. Northwestern's 24th. First time it's been in the BCS top 25 since 2008. Michigan looking to take the lead on this drive. Here's Gardner on second down, and he gets hit hard and appears to have the first down. Drew Smith replacing Eric Guzzo, who went out with an injury on the last play. Made the tackle. We'll see where they spot the ball here, whether it's third down and short or first and goal. Yeah, Gardner looks like he came up just short, and he definitely paid for that to run. That's the first time in this game where I have seen the spread element from offensive coordinator Al Borges. That was a traditional spread look and the quarterback design run. Third down and inches. Eighth play of the drive after the Northwestern fumble. Tucson straight ahead did not get into the end zone but has the first down to the one yard line. Sean McKevely was the first man to greet him. And make no mistake now here with a first down conversion inside the two yard line. This is an opportunity. I know Brady Hope thinks of these things as opportunities to establish your offensive line. We're going to tell you we're going to run it inside and we're going to convert. That's what he wants to do. Here's Rawls. Second effort. Touchdown, Michigan. Fourth rushing TD for Rawls, and Michigan leads for the first time. Great second effort from Thomas Rawls. The play was not blocked particularly well. It's just the second effort and cutback from Rawls to get in the end zone. 
And Gibbons on for the point after. How about this? We've had three 10 play scoring drives so far. 14 7, Michigan. Balls in for the touchdown to give the Wolverines a seven point lead. Get a touchback and will come out to the 25. And here's Mark getting the pitch on the short side of the field. Knocked out of bounds near the 30 by Brennan Byer. Close to five yards there. Again, we saw bits and pieces of Gardner a year ago. But just watching him in practice and in last week against Minnesota and here today, you get to see the wide variety of skill set. Absolutely. And he was a very highly recruited quarterback coming out of Inkster. Uh, in Michigan and I think you know this is what they saw in him early on is the ability to keep his cool throw from the pocket and make plays with his feet Coulter in trouble he'll run and Coulter gets the first down dives to the 37 yard line Kenny Demons and Raymond Taylor on the stop Coulter like Gardner pretty good vision absolutely. and wise that was a good move absolutely I mean both of these quarterbacks this is this is a hard game to play defense against these kinds of quarterbacks that can throw the ball from the pocket but then also when there's not a play they can make it with their feet Northwestern bringing Trevor Simeon into the game for the first time at quarterback he and Coulter in some games this year have split duties at that position a dangerous pass but it was pulled in by true freshman Dan Vitale, the tight end. I think you see Simeon in because of this being the two minute drill, and they're going to be throwing the ball exclusively. Second down and three. Simeon with time that everybody covered, so Simeon will run and dives for the first down to the 44. Approaching a minute to go, clock stops as they reset the chains. Northwestern with all of its timeouts left. Clock restarted on the ready for play, and Simeon with a long throw. Christian Jones on the catch, but doesn't get much, and he's kept in bounds, so Northwestern will use a timeout. Courtney Avery on the stop, and Northwestern has two timeouts remaining. <laughs> How about the Cues? The Cues as an orange alum, how does that make you feel? Still got a ways to go. <laughs> Second and six for Northwestern. Coulter going deep down the sideline. One-on-one -on -one coverage, but Tony Jones can't pull it in. Oh, the pass was there. JT Floyd with coverage. The throw on the money. Wow, Tony Jones is their speed receiver on the outside. That ball thrown perfectly from Trevor Simeon. Tony Jones normally makes that. Surprised he didn't lay out earlier. Do you think this right here, Floyd, Contacting the left arm, distracted him a bit. So. I don't think so. I mean, that's you. You practice that every day on the practice field. You got to come up with that one. That's third down. And Northwestern in danger of giving the ball back to Michigan with time. Wide open though, in the middle of the field is Christian Jones. A first down to the 19-yard line. A 21-yard gain. Clock running, 45 and counting. Northwestern with two timeouts left. Down seven points here at the end of the second quarter. And Simeon throwing strikes on this drive. Coming in cold off the bench. Simeon again. What a beautiful throw! Touchdown! Oh, what a pass! And Cameron Dickerson with his first touchdown. Back shoulder, Trevor Simeon on the money. Raymond Taylor, the corner was there. Just did not make the adjustment fast enough. And Dickerson looked like he came down in bounds. But you said it, Trevor Simeon. I don't know if you understand how hard it is to come off the bench cold like that in a two-minute drill. And everybody knows you're going to pass the ball to come in and throw those kinds of passes, all of which were right on the money. How about the redshirt freshman to adjusting, knowing, knowing that's a, a back shoulder throw as the extra point is good. Well, that's only his eighth catch, his first collegiate touchdown. He's barely played today. 
And he comes up with a catch of the half. Well, the key is looking back for the football, and Simeon sees that the corner plays over the top. He's aiming for the pylon. That ball would have hit the pylon if Dickerson wasn't there, and then he just trusts that once Dickerson gets upfield and gets his eyes back, now he's got to adjust to the ball, and when the corner doesn't look for it, the receiver has the advantage. That's the end of the first half. Michigan and Northwestern tied at 14. Impressive. Final drive by Northwestern and Devin Gardner only one of his last five. He finished with 76 passing yards, 48 rushing yards, and a touchdown on the ground. And Northwestern will have the football to start the second half. You ever get any fights going into the tunnel with uh, the other team? As a quarterback? No. No, you, you, try, you try not to. I mean, that's one of, the unique, <laughs> one of the unique things about the big house both teams going into the tunnel together at halftime and post game. Here's Jen. Thanks guys coach. What do you think about the play of Dean Gardner so far? Oh, I think he's playing fine. I think uh, two good teams playing hard now being down a quarterback. He's taken some hard hits out there. How much does that concern you? Well, we don't like anybody to get hard hit. I mean uh, running backs quarterbacks offensive tackles, you know, uh, you know, we just got to make sure he's being smart and uh, doing a good job. All right. Thanks coach. Thanks. Dave. Pretty stock uh, answers there. He, from, he just uh, likes to do the hard hitting. <laughs> <laughs> We're tied at 14. Time now for the Lexus halftime report to the studio and Reese Davis. Welcome back to coverage of college football presented by Cars.com on ESPN and ESPN 3D. Michigan and Northwestern tied at 14 as we get ready to start the third quarter here at the Big House. With Brian Greasy, I'm Dave Pash. Let's talk about Devin Gardner. Second yeah. straight started quarterback, under 50% completion rate, but made some good decisions and had a rushing touchdown. Well, we knew that he had athletic ability and we knew he could throw the football, but there's been some things that he's done that really show that he's maturing in the quarterback position. Right here, this is a running play, and he identifies the seventh man in the box and the eighth man in the box. So he throws it out to the outside, gets a gain of eight on first down. Very veteran move. Here you're going to see downfield. He wants to get the ball to Funches, but identifies that there's a safety that potentially is going to give me a problem. So I'm going to pull it down and get a conversion on third down. Then the last part is anticipation from a quarterback. Watch on the out route. He sees an off corner who's soft and then throws the ball on time and accurate to Jeremy Gallon. The anticipation and the accountability that Devin Gardner has shown in this first half orchestrating this offense is what has been the most impressive thing to me. If you're just joining us, Denard Robinson out with a nerve injury in his throwing elbow. And he's day to day. And it goes through the end zone and out. It'll come out to the 25 for the Wildcats. Jen Brown talked with Pat Fitzgerald at the half. That's right, Dave. He told me, look, if we could just get off the field on third down and tackle, we'd be in a much better position now. And that's what he stressed with his team at the half. He told them, look, that hitch route is not going to beat us. If we play our position, we can tackle, get off that field. We are going to be in a much better position. It should be another exciting 30 minutes of football. Yeah, Michigan was 5 of 7 on third down. A lot of those conversions on scrambles by Gardner. The Northwestern quarterback, Kane Coulter, had a pretty good half running the football, but it was Trevor Simeon in the two minute throwing the ball and leading him down to the touchdown as Coulter takes off and gets good yardage here on first down. Picks up eight. Will Campbell downfield makes the stop. And I think what Pat Fitzgerald said could be applied to either team right? because both of these quarterbacks with their mobility they're going to make plays with their feet and whichever defense can tackle better in space would have a really good shot at winning this football game. Northwestern trails Michigan and Nebraska by a game for the top spot in the Legends division. Coulter, first down and out to the 44-yard line. 11-yard gain. Kovacs makes the tackle. Consecutive run plays to start the half for one, Coulter. One of the things Greg Madison, a defensive coordinator for Michigan, said was he's worried about the cutback run with Coulter. He's got great vision. And when they get on the edge of the perimeter and you try to get to the edge as a defense and account for his speed, He's very good at seeing those cutback lanes and making you pay. Only throwing two passes, and he's run the ball 11 times. He'll pitch it here. Trumpy gets nailed short of the line of scrimmage by Jordan Kovacs. A loss on the play. Great play by Kovacs. Been physical all year. Plays off the block of Itali. 
gets to the edge and a nice conversion. Kovacs is the leader of this defense for Michigan. His fourth tackle for a loss on the season. Make out Wister Proud with that tackle. Yeah, wearing his number, number 11, and has the option to wear that for the rest of the season. Normally wears 32. Play fake, and Coulter throwing. Leaping attempt, and it's broken up. It was Kovacs covering Christian Jones. So now it's third down and long. Yeah, again, Kovacs this time in coverage. They asked him to play man to man. Not something he is normally uh, in a position to do, but he was all over the receiver there. Northwestern in the first half, two of five on third down. This is third and 12. They converted on third and 12 on their opening drive in which they scored a touchdown, the first to do so on Michigan this year on their opening possession. Michigan showing blitz. Here they come. Coulter steps up, eludes two tacklers, running around, has an open man, it's complete. First down of the 45-yard line. Trumpy juggled it, but then secured it for the first down. Michigan had a perfect blitz on Kovacs, comes free, just not able to get him on the ground. Tremendous athletic ability from Coulter, and these are the kinds of things, the reason why Pat Fitzgerald plays Kane Coulter at the quarterback position and not Trevor Simeon. Very similar to the opening drive. Northwestern marched down the field and scored. Coulter with the late pitch, and Mark, who's back on the field, hangs onto the ball as he takes a shot from Morgan and is close to another first down. And he's got it, an 11-yard game. You can see it's played well by Cam Gordon on the outside. There's just nobody for the pitch man, and Morgan doesn't have the kind of speed to keep up with Venrick Mark and another conversion for a first down. And Mark to the sideline again, trying to fight off an injury. Got 75 yards on the ground. Northwestern is inside the Michigan 25. They led 7-0, then Michigan went up 14-7. Northwestern tied it at the end of the half. Coulter to throw. Going in zone, got a man. Easy touchdown. Dan Vitale, the true freshman, a 23-yard score. Impressive opening drive from Northwestern. They make their hay on the ground with the option game, and then they choose their spots to throw the ball with Kane Coulter. Michigan made an adjustment to stop the option with a three-deep defense, and Cam Gordon just let Vitaly go right by him. And Budzin makes it 21-14, Northwestern. You're going to see a three-deep defense to contain the perimeter. And Vitali just runs right by Cam Gordon to take the seven-point lead. Welcome back to Ann Arbor. Let's take a look at this last touchdown. To, to account for the quarterback, Michigan wanted to get seven guys in the box. And what that did was leaves Cam Gordon one-on-one -on -one with Vitali on the outside. And Gordon just has a bust in coverage in man-to-man. -man. He's got to run with Vitali. And this is an easy throw for Kane Coulter. The adjustment by Michigan to play man-to-man -man against this option attack. You've got to have accountable players on the back end that know who they have in coverage. And Cam Gordon missed it. The big play on that drive was Coulter scrambling and finding Trumpy for 13 yards. It was third and 12. Coulter got away from a few would-be tacklers and found an open Trumpy. Norfleet is the deep man as Flaherty kicks it off. Norfleet straddling the goal line. Finds a seam at the 20, but the hole closes at the 25. Play action here for Gardner. Steps up and gets nailed as he throws. High and almost picked off at midfield. Daniel Jones had a shot at it. Again, Gardner takes a hit as he releases the pass and it's sailed. It's the first mistake force from Devin Gardner right here. You just got to eat the football. You don't want to throw late over the middle. That should have been intercepted. And then you take a big hit on the back end to add insult to injury. Put yourself in vulnerable situations and Arnfeld makes him feel it. I'll tell you, if Daniel Jones doesn't tip that, it's picked off because yes. there was a man behind him. Third down and 10. Little half roll for Gardner. Being chased from behind, doesn't see him. And down goes Gardner at the 23. Deontay Gibson tracks him down 
for the first set of Devin Gardner today. Give credit to Northwestern defense making adjustments, trying to get some pressure. Look at the effort by Gibson. Had to run a long ways to get to Devin Gardner, but playing a little man-to-man -man coverage, not giving the easy throw on the outside to Devin Gardner, forcing him to read. Comes up with another big sack. They have kicked it every time at Venren Mark. They'll do it again. He's got two returns for touchdowns this year. Makes the first man miss. And good job along the sideline, though, to get him out of bounds. Short of the 30-yard line by Thomas Gordon. First three and out for Michigan today. And Wildcats have the ball with a seven-point lead when we come back. I tell you what, uh, Pat Fitzgerald was an on awesome player that uh, you knew when you looked across that line of scrimmage inside of his face mask and you saw those eyes that uh, he was going to come to play for 60 minutes. Two-time National Defensive Player of the Year at Northwestern. Play fake and Coulter rolling out, dumps it off. Tim Riley with the first down out near the 45-yard line. You know, in fact, uh, the last time we had Northwestern, we were at Penn State. It was a great atmosphere. You were down there talking to Fitz. Yeah. What did he say to you? Uh, well, I asked him, if, you know, on days like this, when we're down there on the field, do you want to go at it one more time? Uh, and he said, you know, I would love to do it, but we'd probably both be one-hit wonders. <laughs> I thought he said something like, I'd love to go back out there and knock you out again. Well, that too, yeah, but I didn't want to relay that part. Here's Mark. Able to get the corner, but only a gain of a couple as he's pushed out by J.T. Floyd. Northwestern, three scoring drives. First drive of the game, last drive of the half, and first drive of the second half. Yeah, and that the first drive of the second half was impressive. And now you see that Kane Coulter is starting to feel a little more comfortable with him opening it up and throwing the football on first down. It's there for them to, to convert on any first down they want. Here's second and seven. A swing pass that's high but caught by Tony Jones and Jones dives close to the first down in Michigan territory at the 46 yard line. Hard to tell if that was a, a forwards or a backwards pass but a good catch by Tony Jones it is ruled a forward pass and it is a first down big play. Michigan the number one pass defense in college football statistically and they make a play here on third and eight like they're bringing some blitz right here. They'll run the ball. Trumpy, first down, and more. Tripped up at the 11-yard line by Thomas Gordon. How about the play call to run the option on third and long, and they get 19. Well, I don't think it was called initially. I think they audible to it, a great audible from Mick McCall, offensive coordinator. When you get that blitz to the strong side and you run the option into it, if one guy's out of place or out of their gap, it can be a big play. Great execution by the offense. And Kane Colts, a great play call by Mick McCall. Well, first down and goal for Northwestern. Coulter, oh, they had a man wide open, but Martin couldn't get the ball. Might have been tipped at the line. He talked about Mick McCall, fifth year as the offensive coordinator for Northwestern. And a lot of people wondering why this guy hasn't gotten a shot at a head coaching job given his work with the yeah. Northwestern quarterbacks the last yeah. handful of seasons. I, I'm certainly wondering why. And I think uh, more and more people are starting to see that Mick McCall is an outstanding offensive corner. He's done it a number of different ways. It was a passing offense with Mike Kafka and Dan Persa, and now it's a run based offense. Either way, this Northwestern offense has always been productive. Here's Mark trying to get outside in trouble and gets pinballed to the eight yard line. Another third down coming up, third and goal. Huge play coming up here for the Michigan defense. Try to force a field goal and not get down 14 points. But Northwestern has converted his last five third downs and they're doing it multiple ways on third and long through the air and also on the option running the ball. Yeah, and I think if you're Greg Madison, you got burned in third and seven with the option on a blitz. I don't think he blitzes anybody here. I think you play defense and you just get the ball carry on the ground before they get to the end zone. Play 12 with a drive, third and goal. Coulter in trouble. And down he goes at the 18-yard line. Sacked by Bayer. 
The second sack of the day. Boy, was close to a face mask, but no penalty flag was thrown on the play. Let's see if this was a clean tackle by Byer. Yeah, Byer just comes off the edge with a bull rush, and yeah, he had the shoulder pad. That was a clean play. Good effort by Byer, and then Craig Rowe comes from the other side and cleans it up. So now Bud Zine, who's only missed one field goal all year, puts it through. He's now 12 of 13 on the season, and Northwestern takes a 10-point lead on Michigan. But a big stop by the defense on third down yeah. for the Wolverines. Michigan avoids two back-to-back -back touchdown drives, but they give up 10 points early in the second half. Inside four to play here in the third, 24-14. Only one game separates Northwestern from Michigan and Nebraska for the lead in the Legends division. Looks like Wisconsin is going to advance to the Big Ten championship game. Beating Indiana right now on ESPN2. Norfleet brings it up. It's met at the 20 and stuck at the 22. Gardner to the air again. Pumps looking deep again. Going for Gallon. And Gallon able to hang on despite getting drilled by Campbell. It's a 42 yard catch for Jeremy Gallon. Good throw. What a great route by Gallon. This ball is thrown late. That's why the safety gets over to make the play. That's a very difficult play for Gallon to make. You can see that Devin Gardner holds the ball too long, and that allows Campbell to get over. But Gallon just makes a fantastic catch in traffic. So the penalty keeps the drive alive for Michigan, and they make a big play. 42 yards. They're inside the 30. Gardner throwing again. Dumps it off. Toussaint keeps his feet alive. Stays in back. That pass interference call on third and 17 huge gives Michigan the automatic first two plays later they're in the end zone first touchdown pass of the day for Gardner. Oh well, yes who's going to step up in the leadership role. That drive, it's two juniors, Jeremy Gallon and Fitz Toussaint, make great plays to get Michigan in the end zone. 24 21. Michigan within three. Great adjustment on the screen. Just dumped it to him over the middle. We haven't seen that all game. And then three missed tackles from the Northwestern defense. An opportunity to get Fitz Toussaint out of bounds and tippy toe down the sidelines. Uh, confidence is such a fragile thing with young players. And Devin Gardner is so green at the quarterback position that anything positive that happens on the field is just going to build more confidence in him and most importantly, build more confidence in his teammates around him that when the chips are down, they can make the plays to get back in the game. Matt Wild kicking off. Benrick Mark from the one. Mark ran into a teammate, and down he goes at the 21-yard line. And look at the last three possessions for Northwestern. They're moving the ball on this Michigan defense, which comes in seventh in the nation in yards allowed, 13th in points allowed. Well, it's really been the option game, which has been the difference. And can Michigan find the schemes? Can Greg Madison dial up the scheme to stop the option game on the perimeter? That's really been the difference in those three drives. Think about it. Michigan under Brady Hope, when it scores 21, has not lost a game. But they're trailing despite having 21. Mark stood up, pushed back. Campbell again, getting off a block, making a play. Short game. It'll bring up third down. No, and I'm surprised that they're not continuing to run the option. That time they give it to, to Venrick Mark on the inside, and Big Will Campbell at 310 pounds says, you're not going to run inside on me. Trumpy is in the game and running back now. Flanking Coulter on third down and five. Coulter's been very good on third down so far. He'll throw it here. In the coverage, it's pulled in. First down. 
Christian Jones. And he's wrapped up by Thomas Gordon at the 38. For those people that think Kane Coulter can't throw the football from the pocket, Exhibit A, he can throw the ball from the pocket. That was a dart. If you try to contain him in the pocket and give him time to throw, he will throw the ball accurately down the field and hurt you. See if Northwestern gets a snap. Nope. They will not before the end of the quarter. Northwestern's two losses have come when they've had leads going into the fourth. They've got Michigan by three with 15 minutes left. Three-point battle in Ann Arbor, and Northwestern has got momentum with the option game. Take a look. In the second half, the option has killed Michigan. They're optioning the nickel. That's Cam Gordon. Big play to Venrick Mark for a first down. Same thing. You come with a pressure, and you can option off of the big nickel. And then the last part, you get a blitz from Michigan to try to take it away, and you option the defensive end, and the blitzing Jordan Kovacs is not on the pitch. Leads to a big play. The option has really hurt Michigan in the second half. And Pat Fitzgerald, 37 years of age, yet the second longest tenured coach in the Big Ten. And this guy's fired up for the fourth quarter. Northwestern possessed it for over 11 minutes in the third. And a big hole here for Mark. First down, and Kovacs brings him to the ground of the 50, but after 12 yards. And Northwestern again moving the football on this Michigan defense. Wildcats have lost twice this year. They had Penn State by double figures, leading by 11 in the fourth. They blew a 12-point lead against Nebraska in the fourth and lead Michigan by three. And Colts are going to go deep. One-on-one -on -one coverage, and the pass is incomplete. Kovacs broke it up. Vitaly, the intended receiver. Vitaly had a touchdown catch in the third quarter. It's a great play by Jordan Kovacs. Watch him see the ball into the player's hands and then get his hands on his arms. Don't get there too early when you're a defensive back. Once he puts his hands up, then you put your hands up and try to break his free from the football. He wanted the call, but a good no call. You know, the Big Ten has taken some heat for some other missed calls and pass interferences earlier, but they, they've gotten them right today. Second and 15, here comes a blitz. And Coulter will keep trying to get outside. Wrapped up at the 49 in Michigan territory, a pickup of six. And this was another option with a blitz from Michigan. Watch him come from the outside. And this time they get Jake Ryan on the pitch and force Kane Coulter to keep the ball and make leverage on the football to the rest of your defense. That's playing the option better in the second half. Third down and nine. Northwestern is seven of 11 on third down. And Coulter has made a lot of plays through the air on third down. And Christian Jones has been his go-to target in these situations today. Here comes pressure. Coulter in trouble, hit as he throws, incomplete. It was Kovacs on a blitz. Got to the quarterback and forces a punt. And Coulter, a little slow to get up. Take a look at the bullet. Here comes Kovacs, here comes Ryan. He's gonna come right through. The zone blitz. Kovacs with great effort and energy gets to Kane Coulter for a big stop on third down. And then you saw at the end there, Jabril Black. Coulter got hit into Black and was slow to get up. Kind of had his head down as he walked off the field. Good hang time on the punt and fair caught by Dilio inside the 10. 41 yard punt. Michigan backed up early fourth, trailing by three. Key game in the Legends Division standings of the Big Ten. No Denard Robinson because of the nerve injury to his throwing elbow. And Devin Gardner making his second consecutive start at quarterback. Start of the year as a wide receiver. It's trouble on his goal line and got rid of the pass. We'll see if they mark him down or if they rule that he got rid of the pass first. Pressure by Tyler Scott. There's no foul for intentional grounding. Number 28 was in the area. Okay, so no, no grounding, and he wasn't in the grasp and down on the play. What a great effort here from Devin Gardner. He didn't see Arnfeld coming off the weak side, and he just throws that ball in the area, and Toussaint was back there. Don't know if he was in the pattern or not, but the fact that he was back there prevented the safety on second down he throws complete and it's going to be a first down for Roundtree boy that last play it was close yeah. to his left forearm right. being down before he released the pass yeah. let's see here it's anything other than a hand or a foot 
It's close to that forearm being down. But it looked like the ball was out of the end zone. It probably wouldn't have been a safety. Just would have been spotted at the one. Now it's first down on the 20. Play action for Gardner. And another long throw on the money. And caught. Roundtree out to the 46-yard line. A 25-yard pass. I tell you, there's been some outstanding throws from Devin Gardner. This one right on the money. That is not an easy pass. A long developing play. Call that a bench route. You've got to anticipate and put air under that ball and let your receiver run out underneath it. And Roundtree, I bet that looks beautiful in 3D. That's a beautiful throw and catch. Now Michigan not a trouble now the ball at its 45 yard line but no running room for Tucson. He'll lose yardage. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Reese. Dave it's time for a Dr. Pepper conference update and ACC ACC Coastal is a complete mess. Miami's in the lead. Stephen Morris against Virginia to Clive Walford for the touchdown. Now Morris was going in for another score inside the five just a second ago and fumbled. 31-28, Canes have the lead. Here it's 24-21, Northwestern on top. In the Wildcat territory is Dilio off a strong throw from Devin Gardner, 13-yard game. You're starting to see more and more confidence from Devin Gardner. We hadn't seen him throw any balls really on the inside slant yet today. It's that's one of the more difficult throws because there's a lot of traffic in there and it's a confident throw from Devin Gardner on a conversion from Drew Dillio. He's hit six of his last seven passes. And Gardner in the gun here on first down. They'll run Tucson. And he pushes forward to the 36 yard line for about five. Let's check in with Jen Brown. Thanks, Dave. Well, before the game, Denard said that obviously he wanted to be on the field with his teammates, but being a leader, a senior leader, that is, he's he's going to find any way to help out he can. Well, he's taking the role of coach down here on the sidelines. He's going up and down the bench, talking to guys, pulling individual guys aside, telling them what he sees. We saw him pull Roundtree aside, uh, obviously, before this last offensive series. Probably a good message to him there with that long catch, but uh, he's really just doing anything he can to contribute, and that's what he said, and that's what the coaches said he's done such a good job of the last two yeah, games. Being a Captain at Michigan is about so much more than just being on the field. And what I've seen from Denard Roberts last week and this week is true, the true essence of being a captain, and that is being there for your teammates no matter what, no matter whether you can play or not. They'll give it to Tucson again, and they're starting to get some holes between the tackles. Tucson with the first down to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of 10 before Carpenter makes the tackle. Well, they put Joe Carriage in at fullback number 36. Take a look at him on Proby. He's up to the task, and finally, Michigan is finding a little bit of running room in between the tackles. This is what Brady Hoke and Al Borg just want to see from their offensive line up front. First down from the 12 for Michigan. Here's Tucson. Nose dives to the 8 for 4 yards while Boosie brings him down. Approaching nine minutes to go here in the fourth. Northwestern on top by three. Nebraska plays in about 45 minutes at home against Penn State, ABC, ESPN2. Right now, North, uh, Nebraska and Michigan are tied atop the Legends division. Cornhuskers beat Michigan. Northwestern a game back of both. So the Wildcats probably out of it if they lose today. Half roll, round. Tree was uh, going one way, and uh, the other way was uh, Gallon, and he was the intended receiver. And the pass off his hands, incomplete. It's third down and six. Third down and six here. I think if, if you're Michigan, you want to get. They've been getting Devin Gardner out on the edge with these waggles and nakeds and things like that, but he's so dangerous with his feet. But even when you just drop drop him straight back, he can still get out and elude. So right here, you might try to get a run pass option for Devin Gardner. What about the tight end Funches? We, we haven't really yeah. seen him involved here. Down in the red zone, third down and six. In trouble, Gardner, end zone, Funches, touchdown. <laughs> Gardner just threw it up to him. And it's six feet, four inches tall. Funches 
Goes up the ladder and brings it down. His fourth touchdown catch. His first catch of the game. Great poise from Devin Gardner in an all-out blitz situation to hold it as long as he can and identify the one-on-one -on -one matchup that he liked with Funches. And you might have a future as an offensive coordinator. I think he'll stick with his job. <laughs> A lot less stress. <laughs> Extra point makes it 28-24. Gardner has accounted for three touchdowns for the second straight game. That's tough, hanging in there, throwing it up to his big true freshman tight end, Devin Funches, with Campbell wrapped around him. Makes the, the Funch bunch. We talked about Northwestern's defense. Can they hold up in the fourth quarter with a lead? Uh, that lead has evaporated. Wolverines by four, but plenty of time on the clock for Northwestern and a dangerous return man, Mark. And he is past the 30-yard line. Mark past the 40. Goodbye. Venrick Mark, 96 yards, touchdown. There is a penalty flag, though, back at the 44-yard line. Pat Fitzgerald doesn't like to call, but man, how good is Venrick Mark? Well, you've been over saying 100 it. yards rushing today. You've been saying it all day. Why do they continue to kick the ball to him? I, I agree with you. I don't know that I would kick it to him. Let's try and find out where the hold is. Right there it is. When you get a takedown, that alerts the official. You can see the yellow flag right yep. next to him. But who was doing the taking down? Was it the Michigan player, Hawthorne, or the Northwestern player? Couldn't see it there. He just end up on the ground. Well, then with Mark is back in. Keep an eye on him. Over 100 yards rushing today and a touchdown. And they're going to throw it, though, to the flat. Cameron Dickerson with nowhere to go. Game tackle, Gordon and Floyd leading the charge. No gain on the play. And that's the first time we have really seen today the Michigan defense rally to the football. We talked earlier about one of the biggest differences in this defense is their effort and their energy to the football. Greg Madison talks about that. They start practice every single day with the pursuit drill, which is not assignments. It's just running to the football. They used to get a sprint drill, and this defense is really bought into Greg Madison. Amazing the turnaround from a couple of years ago, and they're at the bottom. Uh, the country in most statistics defensively. In trouble, Coulter gets away from an ankle tackle. There's the cutback first down. And Coulter all the way to the 40-yard line. What a great run by Coulter, but he's hurt. Kane Coulter shaking up after the 15-yard run. He got away from an ankle tackle. Don't know if that's when he got hurt or if it was non-contact. A Trevor Simeon will come into the game at quarterback. Kovacs brought him down. He's such a tough player. He's he puts himself in these positions. He's trying to get every inch and he's really been fortunate this season to avoid injury and hopefully this isn't anything serious but he looks like Kovacs comes down to the bottom of his leg and his foot was caught in the ground and it looked like he turned that ankle. But injuries are a part of the game, and the fortunate thing for Pat Fitzgerald is he's got a quarterback in Trevor Simeon uh, that has played a bunch this season and shown that he can do the job in the fourth quarter. Simeon, four, five, 51 yards, and that beautiful back shoulder touchdown pass to Cameron Dickerson at the end of the first half. Simeon got a man. And got a first down, or at least close to it, as Demetrius Fields makes the catch. Almost 20 on the play. Watch James Ross, the linebacker number 15, inches away from getting a hand on that football. But you've got to know, if you're Michigan on defense, that when Simeon comes into the game, it's now not an option game. This is a passing game. Get to your depth of the linebackers. Stick to your man in, in pass coverage. It's a first down, 27 catch of the year, first of the day for Demetrius Fields. Here's Mark, can't get away, 
from a couple of defenders. He's slippery, but Kenny Demons made sure that Mark didn't get out of there. No game. Inside five to go here in the fourth. And a second and ten for Northwestern. Actually, they'll officially give him a one-yard loss. Mark will come out of the game. Tyrus Jones will be in at tailback for second and 11. And Simeon still in the game at quarterback. Sophomore from Windermere, Florida. Play number eight of the drive coming up. Simeon to the air. Pocket collapsing. Simeon rolling and then throws it away. And there's a flag. He was hit late out of bounds. Brennan Byer hit the quarterback late. And Pat Fitzgerald knows it's going to be a first down. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 97, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Only the second Michigan penalty. Let's see. Yep, took... Two, three steps. Took a step. Yeah, it's just unnecessary. You don't need to make, especially in this situation, late in the game, a young player, a true sophomore, and Pat Fitzgerald. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him jump so high. <laughs> now, the fans would like to call, but he did take two, three steps. Yeah. Wasn't volatile, but by don't, rule, that's a penalty. Don't even put yourself in that situation. There's no need to do that. The ball's gone. You see it gone. And then you take a shot at a quarterback. It's not necessary. They go empty here as Mark flexes out. Pass to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Simeon finds Tony Jones. Northwestern retakes the lead. How about Simeon? Cold off the bench at the end of the half with a brilliant pass to Dickerson. And then he come in, uh, comes in for the injured Coulter on this drive, already there in Michigan territory, and he finishes the drive with a nice touchdown pass. Calm, cool, collected, first and 20, no problem. He's been throwing the ball on target all game. Point after makes it 31 28 Northwestern. Simeon, six of seven passing, 87 yards, two touchdowns, including the go ahead toss to Tony Jones. Northwestern on the road leads it late in the fourth quarter. Big touchdown throw to set Northwestern up by four. Take a look, they're gonna play quarters coverage and Tony Jones ends up matched up on the linebacker Demons. This is a mismatch. Northwestern sees it, Trevor Simeon executes and it's an easy touchdown for Northwestern. But perfectly thrown football. Take a look from the back end. Watch how Simeon anticipates this throw. This is not a big window here. He's getting ready to throw the football. But he leads Tony Jones across the field, thrown perfectly. Trevor Simeon, very impressive in this game, throwing the ball. Two touchdown passes, and Northwestern leads it 31-28 over Michigan. And now we'll see how Devin Gardner, in his second career start at quarterback, although he played some last year in spot duty, how he'll handle this final drive. Four minutes to go and all their timeouts. First to kick off. Here's Northfleet. In trouble. Spins away from a couple of guys and still going. Northfleet all the way to the 42-yard line, and it looked like he might get tackled at the 10. Of an interception by Northwestern's Dugar as Gardner throw it up for grabs. And a huge play giving Northwestern possession with a three-point lead and 337 remaining. On first down, Gardner throws downfield. Dugar was waiting for it and picked it off. Dugar has been targeted a number of times in this game. Take a look. He's at the top of the screen. Funches is just going to come out, and Devin's going to try to get the football to him. But Dugar plays off of the wide receiver, reads the route, does a great job of anticipating, and he's right there to make a big play for Northwestern. You got to know as a quarterback, when you take that shot downfield, am I throwing against man or am I throwing against zone? And that time Dugar baited Gardner into throwing. 
Kane Coulter is back in the game at quarterback for Northwestern after getting injured on the previous drive. Here's Trumpy for about three. We'll see when Michigan starts to use its timeouts. They will here. So Gardner, we talked about it. It's in his hands. Denard Robinson is injured. It's Gardner's first real adversity as the Michigan quarterback with his team trailing, and he throws a pick on first down. Michigan not done yet if they can stop the Wildcats. Back for second down in a moment. Denard Robinson didn't start, not available because of the elbow injury. Uh, Gardner has accounted for three touchdowns, but he just threw an interception, giving Northwestern a second down and seven after a three-yard gain on first down. Coulter will keep it and get stacked up after a gain of a couple at the 45. Let's get the latest on Coulter in the quarterback situation for Thanks, Northwestern Dave. Virginia. Yeah, well, we obviously see he's back in the game, but I can tell you he came over to the sidelines and he's got a massive taped job on that left ankle. They taped it underneath, put another brace on it, taped it again. Now, obviously, we've seen him make so many great plays today with his feet. you got to wonder if that's going to give him a problem here in the last three and a half minutes. That's a good point. Are you, are you really thinking about, well, let's just force Michigan to call its final time on and punt the ball? Are you attacking here? If it were me, I want to attack, get a first down, put this game away. Northwestern is 8 of 13 on third down and 6 of 8 this half. They need to get to the 40. Option, Coulter keeps, and Coulter, beautiful move, is going to be close. Made a great move. Initially, it looked like he was going to get tackled at the line of scrimmage, but got away from trouble. He looks to be short, though. An official timeout. They're going to say Michigan timeout. He's definitely short looking at the spot. He's short by a yard. It's fourth down. Michigan's out of timeouts. Fourth down and one. They'll keep the offense on the field. We've seen Northwestern jump offsides a bunch today. Maybe Northwestern will try to get Michigan to jump here on fourth and one. Mark is behind Coulter. Now Mark in motion. Coulter will keep, and Coulter going to be close. He got hit by James Ross. Wow. All the pins, obviously, Big on hit. the spot. And judging forward progress on those is tough. A huge hit from James Ross the third, right in the hole. Take a look. And watch where the ball is here. It's all about where the ball is, and now you can't tell there. Let's see from this angle, and you can see the ball if it crosses the 40-yard uh, line. I, I think he's short, Oof. but again, it's it's all based on where they put the football down. The nose it's of right the on football the is, to is touching the 40-yard line. Yeah, just barely. Oh my goodness! Oof. The officials haven't decided yet. He got first it. First down. I mean, barely got it. Now, Michigan cannot challenge. They don't have time, a timeout. They can't challenge the spot. Now, it may come from upstairs anyway to look at that again. That's, but because you couldn't see the ball, it's yeah. in the middle of the field. It's awfully hard. And that's that's just review. what Brady Hoke is saying right now. He says, can I challenge the spot? And he's saying, I don't have any timeout, so I can't challenge it. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the hard part about this. You're in this situation where you use your timeouts. Play clock is at eight, so the snap will come with about 241. Once we snap it a little bit early here. And Mark, it's maybe a yard, so the next snap will come around the two-minute mark. I've just been really impressed with how physical and how tough Kane Coulter is, and Venrick Mark for that matter. These guys are not, you know, finesse players, and it's apropos in a, in a game like this with two defensive-minded coaches that preach physicality and toughness that the game could potentially come down to that one fourth down play where Kane Coulter had to barrel over James Ross. Again, if Michigan gets the ball back, it's going to be in the hands of Gardner again and just through an interception on the last Michigan possession because of the injury to Robinson. Here's Coulter, cuts it upfield. And brought down after minimal game by Kenny Denon. So the next snap on third down will come with about 120 on the clock. Right. And if they get a first down, the game's over. 
Do you, do you take a shot by putting it in the air here, or do you just keep it on the ground? I'm going to keep it on the ground. You don't want an incomplete pass in this situation is, is the worst thing that Northwestern can have. So you keep this on the ground, snap it, like you said, for about a minute and 20 seconds left. They'll pitch it on third and nine, and Mark's going to get spun down at the 44. A loss of five. So the fourth down punt, assuming they punt, will come with about 30 seconds left. Yep. And I, I'm surprised that they even called that option route. That pitch is not a guarantee. I mean, that thing could have been on the ground. And, but that just shows you how much confidence Pat Fitzgerald has in Kane Coulter and Venrick Mark to protect the football. Gallon and Dillio are the deep men. Here's Gallon on the 15 yard line. Gallon past the 30 and all the way to the 37 with 18 seconds left. Remember the clock will stop on first downs and their kicker Brandon Gibbons has made a 52 yarder this year. That was a bad punt there. You yeah. not want to put that was a poor punt which gave Michigan that ball should be inside the 10 yard line. It gave Michigan 30 yards right off the bat. Now they only need one big play to get to the 35 yard line. No timeouts. 18 seconds left. Gardner steps up in trouble. Throws it up for grabs. Contact and it's caught in the redirection by Roundtree. They got to get down there and spike it. Clock will stop to reset the chains and then sure, it'll restart. Make sure everybody's set so you don't get a penalty. Right. That'd be a runoff. The runoff and the game would end. Everybody is set. 53 yard pass play. There's the spike. Now do you kick the field goal or do you take a shot to the end zone? They're going to go for the field goal, but how about this by Roundtree? What, what concentration from Roundtree? You take a shot downfield, you get bumped. They're not going to call pass interference as they should down there. And great concentration from Roy Roundtree. Big players make big plays in big situations. So here comes Gibbons, who's made 10 straight field goals to tie the game. 26 yarder. Seven seconds left. Michigan opting not to take a shot to the end zone. Just going for the tie. And the kick is good with three seconds left. And actually, the clock kept running down to zeros. Let's see how the officials rule it if they put time back on the clock here. Uh, how about that? Gardner throws it up for grabs. Roundtree honoring Desmond Howard by wearing his number 21 makes a Howard-like play. What a wild fourth quarter here in Ann Arbor. Michigan was down 10, came storming back. Gardner hanging in the pocket, finding Funches for the touchdown. Michigan went up 28-24. Then Simeon replacing an injured Kane Coulter throws the go-ahead touchdown pass to Tony Jones. Then it looks like it's over for Michigan. Gardner throws a pick inside four minutes left. The Wolverines use all their timeouts. And then Gardner, one last chance, throws it up for grabs. Roundtree off the redirection makes the catch. And Gibbons with the field goal to tie it and send it to overtime. By the way, Northwestern has never lost an overtime game against a Big Ten team. They're 7-0. I just think that both of these teams have played so well, it's, it's fitting that this game's going to come down to an overtime session. Michigan ball on the 25. I'll say this, you've got one quarterback that has a lot of experience in Kane Coulter, and then you have another quarterback in Devin Gardner who's still just learning, still just green, but has a tremendous amount of potential. We've seen him beat Northwestern's defense with his feet, and right now Brady Hoke is not telling Devin Gardner to be cautious at all. If it's there, use your feet. Two backs and two tight ends on first down. Play action for Gardner. Into the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. Intended for Roundtree. Dangerous throw with Carpenter and Dugar converging. We talk about a young quarterback. You need to look off the safety in a one-man route. That time, Devin Gardner didn't look the safety off, and there was an opportunity to get that ball. Just missed it. 
So second down and 10. Michigan tied with Nebraska atop the Legends division. Northwestern a game back. Nebraska plays Penn State on ABC ESPN 2 330. Pass is caught. Roundtree's loose. First down and run out of play inside the 10. It'll be first and goal. 17 yards for Roundtree. Northwestern has played soft with the corners on the outside all game. This hitch route has been there all day. They've come up and tackled well. That time a missed tackle allows Roundtree to get a first down. First and goal from the eight. Gardner's thrown for 286 yards, has accounted for three touchdowns, including one on the ground. He'll hand it off to Tucson. Inside the five. A gain of five on the play to about the three before Carpenter makes the tackle. Can this Michigan offensive line get enough push at the end of this game and in overtime to get this ball in the end zone? They have been inconsistent in the running game, especially in the inside power run. Can they blow this Northwestern defensive line off the ball? Tucson again. Powers throw a tackle and gets to the one. Definitely short though. While Boosie on the stop, Tucson lowered the shoulder and got to the one. So third down and goal. This gives Brady Hoke some options here. Run pass. You got Funchess again, who they threw it to last time. What are you doing? No, I'm doing the same thing you did on first and second down. Give that ball to Rawls, give it to Toussaint, and put it on the backs of this offensive line to get in the end zone. Toussaint is the back. It's play action. Gardner running. He's hit. Touchdown, Michigan. <laughs> Second touchdown on the ground for Devin Gardner. And Michigan leads it in overtime. Northwestern will have the ball next. Gibbons on for the extra point. Northwestern needs a touchdown and an extra point to top. Well, they, they, everybody was thinking the same thing I was. Tucson wasn't going to get in there, just had to beat one guy. And Devin Gardner sprinting to the pylon for a big touchdown for Michigan. The linebackers, Proby. Wabusi, Araguzo, they were all looking for the inside dive. Nobody left on the outside. Nice call, Brady Hope. Now it's up to the number seven defense in the country. Can Michigan stop Northwestern? They've got all the momentum. The Wildcats have weapons with Coulter and Venrick Mark. They need a touchdown and the extra point to send it to a second overtime. Well, now we're going to get the answer to what, how healthy is Kane Coulter because this that's their offense. He and Venrick Mark, and Venrick Mark's not even in the game. Yeah, it's Trumpy. Yep, Trumpy and a tailback. And they shift him out of the backfield. Coulter to throw. In trouble being chased. Coulter's loose inside the 20. And dragged down at the 18-yard line by Ryan. Close to a horse collar tackle. Fitz upset, thought maybe it, there was a running lane that Coulter could have could have had. Yeah, that was actually the same play that Simeon threw the touchdown on. It was better defense by Demons, the, the linebacker. Nowhere for Kane Coulter to go with that football. Makes a great play with his feet. Benrick Mark is in the game. Second and three. Here's Mark. Not a squirt through a hole. Not maybe two that won't get the first down. Will Campbell and Frank Clark on the stop. They're in four down territory, obviously. Down seven. So Tyrus Jones will replace Mark. Tim Riley is in the backfield as well. And Coulter running, and he's short. Lost a yard. Devons made the tackle. So fourth down and two. 
Pat Fitzgerald and Nick McCall, knowing that they need a touchdown, took the opportunity on third and short, knowing that if they didn't get it, they were going to go for a fourth down, but they took the opportunity to maybe take a shot for the end zone, well covered by Michigan defensively, brings up a, the play of the game. You got to get the ball in Coulter's hands on the edge. I would run the option. Fourth down and two at the Michigan 12 in overtime. Northwestern down seven. They look to the sideline for the check. First time I've seen this three-man defensive front for Michigan. Play clock inside of 10. Coulter's got it. Here comes the option. Oh, Devins with a huge hit on Tyrus Jones, and the game is over. Michigan wins in overtime. was a different look on defense. First time we've seen it today, and Demons comes through free and makes the play of the game for Michigan. And keeps their hopes alive of a Big Ten championship. They're a half game ahead of Nebraska. The Cornhuskers right now just ready to kick off with Penn State over on ABC and ESPN2. There's Demons, and nobody accounts for him, and he's just free, and Tyrus Jones had no shot. With a physical game as we had, fitting that the game should end on a fourth and one and a physical play like that. Michigan improves to five and one in the Big Ten. And Devin Gardner's got to feel pretty good. Had that bad interception, but redemption after Roundtree makes a great play to keep their hopes alive. They kick the field goal with time running out in regulation. And another fourth quarter defeat slash overtime defeat for Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern. Another tough loss for the Wildcats. Michigan still alive for a Big Ten championship. Beats Northwestern in overtime. 38-31. Up next, college football scoreboard presented by Honda. What a game here in Ann Arbor as Michigan beats Northwestern in overtime. So long from Ann Arbor. Now let's head to NASCAR in Phoenix.